morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today is the second day, and uh, I'd like to start the lecture three. As I told you, uh, laterally loaded piles. Uh, you know, the remember last lecture, we are talking about some uh, vertically loaded piles. It's very common, just loading cases. But still, we have another one is the horizontal loaded piles. So I'm starting the introduction and the bearing capacity and some of the special just the method uh, called the elastic uh, subred reaction method. I'm just uh, briefly just to explain the method of the, the subred reaction method. These are typical just uh, types of uh, just later loadings uh, we can expect uh, like uh, this kind of structures, uh, we have uh, so many horizontal loadings uh, acting on the abutment or up here, foundations over here. Uh, the wind, uh, in case of a harbor structure, there is a ship impact, and there is uh, some scouring, bridge scouring, and uh, the later earth pressures uh, in, 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 in piles and shaft of the just. Uh, uh, foundation. So there are so many just uh, retro loadings acting on the pile, especially uh, next lecture I'm talking about the OSCE. OSCE is one of the horizontal loading acting actively uh, the, on the uh, structures. Uh, the same as the vertical loading, uh, this horizontal loading has a basic standard of designing in foundation, the first, the loading applied like over H acting on the system and the, the pile is just, uh, just deflect horizontally and we have uh, some horizontal deflections of Y0 over there and then that Y0 is must be less than the allowable horizontal just uh, displacement. This one is allowable just uh, displacement is come from some kind of some uh, details from the superstructures, but anyway, must be less than here. Simultaneously, the developed the the maximum bend, bending moment uh, along these just uh, structures must be less than the allowable just uh, capacity of the here is uh, allowable bending moments. So if we just uh, satisfy two kind of uh, just uh, Displacement and some bending moment uh, is okay. But still, you can question why here is not related to the some horizontal capacity, like a vertical one. Uh, in most cases, uh, Q, U is in vertical, Q more horizontal one is same as this kind of thing we can expect, but Maybe in case of some horizontal loading, if we satisfy these two kind of things, most of one must be satisfied the horizontal capacity of the, uh, the, 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 the soils over there. So uh, this one, maybe you can remember uh, the designing of the horizontal one uh, can be done by two different criteria, and then uh, this one just automatically satisfied. So I'm just focusing on this part in this lecture. First, I'm starting the single piles. Uh, the by lease and ban imp is another well-known scholars, but just uh, in case of laterally loaded piles, we have uh, two different types of loadings: in so active pile and passive piles. What's the active piles? Most of the loading act on the structure directly. In this case, uh, the most of the some abutment structure, uh, some kind of uh, just uh, uh, just uh, how can I say just uh, uh, this kind of structures, and some kind of some harbor or some supporting systems, uh, uh, excavation, but this kind of thing, all just posing acting directly on the uh, jacket structures. Some abutment structure. We call this active. Active. However, uh, 
the passive is not directly on the just foundation. First, there is some movement of the soil, for example, due to some kind of difference between the front and the back, just embankment, there is some kind of movement of the soft soil, and then this soil affects the, the foundations. So that means it's a passive compared to the active one. Like uh, this kind of embankment system, in front of a bankment, we have uh, some kind of building due to some kind of settlement and the horizontal moving, and then same as this kind of uh, some horizontal movement uh, in front, the behavior of some piles, we call it passive cases. In the stabilizing piles over here, there is some sloping ground uh, makes affecting some kind of uh, some and loadings up to this kind of some structures. Same as the stabilizing piles over there, and uh, some kind of some uh, uh, supporting systems to, to sustain this kind of embankment. Uh, maybe you can make this kind of some a strong support, uh, and then and this kind of uh, just soil movement affect uh, these structures. We call this passive. A typical cases in the excavations, also same as the soil, it just has a moving up to the horizontally, and then uh, we can just designing of this uh, just uh, excavation uh, retaining wall systems over here. So uh, I can say this: the one is the active, one is the passive. Uh, this kind of uh, some kind of phenomenon is the most of the horizontal loaded just cases. Uh, we can meet in the real field. So uh, we can just make a little in detail. Due to some horizontal loading, uh, the original shape uh, can be deflected like this way. And then uh, before the loading, the around the just the pile, there is a uniform just soil resistance. But Due to applied loading, there is uh, some difference in the reactions uh, in the deflection from the original to this direction, like Y1, and then there is a reaction, it's larger in the back of this just uh, wall, and then this kind of distribution, after deformation, okay? Before and after. So the reaction, the P, the soil reaction, we call the P. And then the horizontal deflection, we call the Y. P, apply the PT, and then the P1 and the Y1. So if you plot like a P versus the horizontal deflections like here, uh, due to apply loading, the soil reactions has this kind of behavior like here. And uh, uh, originally, there is uh, some steep, just uh, kind of uh, some slope, and then gradually up to a certain point, and then like this kind of behavior is a typical one. Uh, we call this, this a PY curve. It's a nonlinear uh, soil reaction curve. We call this a P. Y curve. What's that? Due to apply the horizontal loading and then the soil react by the P and corresponding the Y deflections horizontally. And we can just plot again the slope of this PY curve. We call this EPY. It's something like a soil modulus of the pile. Pile, just pile and soil, just modulus. The slope. And then uh, in these stages, there is a constant value as just the uh, uh, deflections is going. And then after this point, the slope is changing. Changing. That means the, the slope, stiffness value is, is, is reduced in this just feature. So we have a typical. PY curves and the corresponding some modulus versus deflection curves we obtained. So 
I can define the P is the sole resistance per unit length. The unit is uh, like a kilonewton per meter and the displacement horizontal. And this is the pile diameter. So if we just define, for example, oh, it's a, the P, like here, and then Y, we call this kind of unit. It's an EPY. Uh, EPY is, uh, looks like uh, just uh, P over Y. A unit is a kilonewton, for example, meter square, more like that. Uh, what's the KS? KS means uh, uh, if we have uh, some kind of uh, some loadings over here, it's uh, some kind of P is loading. Ah, so you go to maybe Q, more like that. And then uh, there is uh, some kind of uh, pressure, it's a Q. And deflection is uh, delta. Uh, Q divided by delta. In the vertical, the horizontal is same. So this is one. Uh, this is the unit, it looks like a kilonewton per meter sound, x square, cubic meter. So, uh, you call this is the subgrade reaction modulus, a coefficient of uh, subgrade reaction. This is the file, so it's the modulus. So, E, P, Y, equal K, S, multiplied here. In case of a round pile, it's a diameter. In case of a, some kind of a, some square, that's a width. Like that, but somebody's P, okay, well, any P is the width, but in case of pile, like here. So I'm saying uh, this modulus is the T, is the pile diameter, multiply some, some red reaction modulus, okay, I right hear. So please remember uh, the difference between some um, uh, modulus and uh, the pile modulus over here. It's a typical just uh, analysis method for lateral loaded piles. Uh, it's a simple one, it's an elastic uh, case. As I told you last, yesterday, in the first lecture, elast linear elastic analysis. And then the old conventional one is uh, Brom's just the horizontal method. Brom is the uh, name of the person. And uh, numerical analysis uh, done by finite element method. And uh, some kind of a subgrade reaction method. Okay? So, uh, some types of uh, some method available to designing of the lateral loaded piles, especially the analysis of the lateral loaded piles. Uh, in case of uh, in geotechnical field, uh, uh, I'm focusing on some reaction method. Maybe uh, you can make a simple just a physical model, like a pile is modeled as a beam column element. And the soil is a series of independent springs. For example, it's a horizontal, there is some loading. So we can make a, the soil can be represented as a springs over here. So this is the soil, so it can be represented by some kind of elastic or elastoplastic springs. And then these just piles can be just, uh, can be just uh, analyzed by beam and the column element. Beam and the column. Beam is the, uh, we can have uh, some kind of bending moments, uh, we can expect column. Column is only can concentrate on the vertical loading. Okay? So beam column and some kind of some independent springs. Here, the springs, here, the springs, E, P, Y, E, P, Y, all E, P, Y, uh, is as I told you, one case is a constant. As I told you, it's a constant value. And another one is the non-constant. So in case of a constant value, you can solve 
this kind of beam column elements uh, by closed form solutions, okay, using uh, some boundary conditions on the top of the pile and the top of the pile. Maybe you can apply the boundary condition and can, we can calculate in by hands because it, it's a closed form solution. However, the EPY is not constant. Maybe uh, this curve can be represented. It's a constant means here, slope. Uh, it's a, Non constant means it's a, it's a non linear. It's different. Okay? So, in this case, the non linear, we call this a PY curve analysis for the reaction part. This, this case is only calculated by numerical analysis. Okay? Using PY, condi, PY curves, considering non linear behavior of soil. Okay? This is the main, just the simple and basic concept to solve the horizontal loaded piles. That's the schematic diagram of the horizontal loaded piles. Maybe these horizontal loaded piles can be represented a series of beam column elements vertically, and then there is some kind of reaction part like PY curves representing the soil reaction part. And then this kind of just elements, we can apply the horizontal loading and also we can apply some moment, also some kind of vertical loading. By applying this kind of different loadings, this is the governing differential equations for the beam elements, okay? Maybe you know uh, this just the uh, equations. It's a very, uh, how can I say, in the under, under the course, you have uh, some kind of a beam theory, in the uh, mechanics of material, probably at the time, maybe. This is the beam elements of the first order differentiation forms. And the Px is the vertical loading. And the P is the some kind of some, uh, what's that? The, uh, uh, loadings. And this is the reaction part over here. But this is the typical just the beam column elements. Uh, and uh, in most cases, if we don't have the vertical loading, this one must be zero and maybe this kind of form, maybe. And depending on the loadings, we can just have this kind of typical uh, governing differential equations for the beam, beam theory, beam theory. So uh, we call the beam on linear or nonlinear. Linear means it's a linear. Non-linear means non here. Winkler. Winkler means that. Winkler is the one of the very, just well-known, just uh, mechanics. Just, just uh, scholars, I think. Uh, Winkler told me, we told, the, this kind of some, it's a loading. It looks like uh, uh, proportional to the the displacement at that point, and there is a, some kind of a, some um, the proportionality, like uh, something like that. What looks like a PY curve, but anyway, uh, the Winkler point out the loading applied at certain point on the beam is grossly uh, proportional to the displacement at that point. And uh, he called uh, this the uh, k is a uh, con constant value, slope value between these two cases, the loading. So beam, the Winkler already first proposed this one. That's why we just uh, say Winkler foundation, Winkler mention. That's why beam on elastic or nonlinear elastic foundation by Winkler just uh, just uh, equations like that. For example, this is a vertical one, but if you just translate to 90 degree, that's a foundation. Okay, the shallow foundation or some vertically loaded pile or vertically just standing the wall, we can solve this kind of some things by using this theory, okay? The shallow foundation, uh, lateral loaded piles, lateral loaded walls, 
retaining walls, maybe in this case, using this kind of some governing equations and solve these ones. And we have some exercise uh, tomorrow afternoon uh, using some in house program because uh, well, there are so many commercially available uh, programs, uh, maybe you have uh, in your technical field, but uh, well, there are numerical analysis uh, by commercially, well, Abacus, uh, well, Plexis, uh, well, FVPR, well, Plex, maybe you know a lot about that kind of commercial code, maybe it can solve by using that one, or in house, maybe I made the programs by our in our lab, and we can have uh, some in house, just maybe you can distribute the execution file, maybe you can uh, handle this kind of problem in the exercise, just uh, the problems tomorrow afternoon, I think. As a geotechnical part, we, we need to consider the PY curves with the later loaded files. Why? The other thing, this kind of is a structural problem, so maybe Maybe, maybe already is developed this kind of basic just concept. So we need to con concentrate on this just soil part by this using PY curves. So we nearly want to construct PY curves for different soil cases, more sustained loading, cycling loading, more static loading, dynamic loading. In case of a static loading, there's a typical hyperbolic looks like in soil, it looks like behavior for the PY. And uh, in case of some uh, cyclic loading is due to the, some repeated loading, there is a reduction of the soil, just uh, some kind of modulus uh, like here. This is a uh, uh, static loading. This is typically is a cycling loading. Uh, this is the applied loading and then sustained for a, just a long time, and then the loading just looks like change like here, is a sustained loading. How about the dynamic loading? It's a static loading over here, due to the impact, or due to the very high frequency of loading. In the case, there is a, some kind of increase of just the PY curves like here. A dotted line means a dynamic PY curves compared to a static one. In most cases of dynamic loading, due to the damping effect, there is an increase of the just the stress of the soils like uh, over there. So we have a different types of loading. We can just uh, simulate using these springs by using this kind of PY curves. I told you the horizontal one, but in the conventionally, the Brahms, maybe probably in 1964, he proposed some kind of to calculate some kind of horizontal bearing capacity of the horizontal loaded pile. So his method is very old one. Still, you can see in the textbooks, just maybe only I'm just showing here. Uh, he makes uh, some kind of uh, assumption the pile is long and short piles. Pile is uh, divided into long and short pile. What's the long? Just the long? Short? Is a short? No, it's, it's, a, it's long means what's that? The, it's a flexible. Uh, even the long pile is a long pile. It's a short pile. But anyway, we can uh, divide in, 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 in this simple way, but long is that the, uh, is loading. The, like uh, deflections over there. Short pile is that loading, there is uh, some kind of uh, some dis like uh, translation or rotation, means only the short pile. Short pile means it's uh, like here, translation, something like rotation. But long pile is what's that? There is a flexural, just a uh, stiffness, we can, this kind of uh, some behavior, like that means what? There is a, some EI of the structures. Just we have right there. We have some value over here. This one is uh, 
To strong means that uh, it's, a, it's a rigid body motion. We call this a short pile. Okay. Long pile is the long means like a, a, it's a flexible pile. Okay. Short pile is uh, called rigid pile. Long pile is the we call flexible pile. It's the same meaning. So depending on the the, the pile and uh, uh, it divides into short and long pile and medium and uh, depending on different soils, clay, sandy soil in just pile, uh, have uh, some kind of uh, some factors that are multiplied embedding depth is less than 2.25 divided into different long short by this factors, okay, beta. Uh, what's that? The beta is the uh, characteristic length. Like here. What's that? The summary reaction modulus multiplied B is the pile diameter divided by four flexible rigid. This is the soil. Uh, sorry, this is the pile. This is the soil. The, the, the ratio between soil and the pile is one fourth. How did you get this just the characteristic length better here? You know the, the remember some kind of different equations and then during the solution by applying the boundary condition, you can have this kind of factors over there and we made the, the uh, this factor is uh, like a beta value. So that's why uh, we point out beta in the process of the calculation of the differential equation, and then uh, beta multiplied the embedding depth is less than 2.25, then must be a short by greater than long by. Mm. How about the sandy soil? We have another different uh, some constant value, eta. It's beta, it's eta. It's, a, it's a, what's a little different, but anyway, eta for the sand. Beta for the clay, who the brom. So you remember so many figures over there at the time. You can calculate the lateral bearing capacity in clay soil depending on different head conditions, pre of by head, less strained rotation of by head. He divided into um, some kind of a criteria like that, and then he proposed some kind of a horizontal Capacity values depending on different uh, some kind of uh, some 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 bias. Uh, though maybe it's a, it's a short pile means like a translation or a rotation. It's a long pile is like a, maybe it's a, some kind of a plastic hinge over here. But anyway, it's something like a, a, it's a flexural one. And uh, the pre head one step pre. The pre is that the pile head is pre, is pre. But in case of some kind of blocks over there, maybe some dams or some uh, bridges just uh, slab or some kind of uh, some jacket in case of the superstructures, it's uh, some kind of some restraint on this part. Okay, so we call this a restraint. Restraint by some rotation or some uh, translation. So, depending on different boundary condition on top of the pile, pre means pre. So, the solution is different, but don't worry about this kind of some equations and uh, maybe in this case, uh, maybe it's one of the, the old one, but anyway, I'm showing and uh, to solve this problem, he proposed uh, the uh, just this complicated uh, one by using this kind of a graph, making replace the equations by this kind of some um, graphs. For the calculation of the ultimate lateral resistance, P, Q, ultimate value, depending on the embedding depth, something like D over L means what's that? For the restraint, Pre. So uh, instead of just uh, calculating in numerically, you can use this chart and find out the Q value over here. For the clay soil, 
but the sand is soil. So maybe you look through, okay, short, long, and depending on the head condition, you can get this kind of some lateral bearing capacity. Maybe you can use this chart, or you can use this kind of graphs. The same one. Who? The Bronze, in 1960, about, about 60 years ago, he proposed this kind of one. But in this case, maybe we can solve it numerically by some kind of finite element method or finite difference method or some boundary element method we can solve uh, directly. So I'm just showing uh, elastic subgrade reaction method. Uh, one of the just method we solve the horizontal loaded piles. Uh, e i d x is the first order. If we don't have uh, some vertical loading. Uh, in the previous uh, governing differential equations over here, over here, if we don't have uh, some vertical loading, it's, uh, it's negligible. Also, uh, if we don't have any some kind of uh, pressures, for, for example, earth pressures, anything, so we call this W, if we use zero, that means we have only the, this one and this one right here. So. You can just uh, reduce to the equations like here. Oh, this is a plus. One is the minus. That means the, the, the convention, sign convention. But uh, due to apply loading, the reaction is the, the opposite direction. That's why we have uh, some plus values. But anyway, this is kind of typical differential equations. As I told you, rigid pi, flexible pi. Depending on the, 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 the sign convention, we can solve that equations by hand calculations. Okay. It's fine. It's uh, just uh, rotate at 90 degree, maybe, maybe just like that. And then this piling, typical just uh, uh, element uh, at certain degree, but anyway, if we vertically, it's 90 exactly, but slightly some kind of set means there is any directions of locating over there, and then there is a reaction, like a spring. We call this a spring of steepness. For example, uh, like uh, this kind of soil reaction part. So we call the, this is a KY, for example, like here. So at this just pre-diagram, there is uh, some kind of uh, some moment and some kind of shear force and some kind of horizontal vertical loading over there. Some kind of loading is uh, applied and uh, the reaction spring means the soil, represents soil. And the very simple algebra, just the equation summation of the horizontal equilibrium and the vertical equilibrium. Horizontal is this direction, the vertical. Another one is the moment equilibrium. You can solve one by one. Maybe one of the one is the, the V is the, the just the shear force acting on this system. Shear force uh, V and the small distance to the V plus dV. This V uh, differentiate the dV dx is that the ky. What's the ky? It's the spring constant K, horizontal subdirection modulus and moment. Finally, you can get this kind of equation. The same as the previous one over there. So, M is the second derivative of the, the, the differential form. If you put over there, there's a first order. Okay, so P is the actual force and uh, this one, if we don't have the vertical loading is zero. dv dx is what? ky. ky. So we have this kind of forms. And uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe I show you the, in detail the closed form solutions. But uh, today, just I am just showing only the result. Uh, small strain theory, we have uh, m. The bending moment uh, acting on the pile can be calculated uh, simply 
the second derivatives of this kind of equations using beam element theory. Okay, this is the, for your information, I'm just to summarize, but I want to skip here, because in case of bending, maybe the left figure, uh, bending, how can you calculate the M, A, E, I, round X, round Y, for example, like, what's that though? How can you calculate this one, M, like here? This is the solution, solution, uh, using the beam theory. Maybe your undergraduate course, maybe already, it's a simple, it's a second grade of the undergraduate course, maybe undergraduate days, maybe you can start this basic um, kind of beam elements, uh, and then this is the solution, and finally we can got this kind of some things, m equal to like that, the third derivative is a v, right? The first derivative of what? That's the reaction. Okay. In case of uh, uh, the constant E value, it's a constant E value. As I told you, it's uh, solved by the close form solution, uh, like here. The constant value uh, solved in close form, uh, applying the boundary condition, and then uh, this kind of one thing. So, uh, the Poulos, just from his textbook, he's talking about the constant value and the infinitely long pile. In this case, he proposed some kind of the y. It's a deflection of pile. E multiply some kind of some, uh, F is that, the, what's that? The F is the vertical horizontal loading. Uh, it's a characteristic length square divided by k. It's a spring constant over there. So, this is the solution. For the pre-head, in case of some constant EI and infinite long pi. For the fixed head cases, so the horizontal deflections is like here. Uh, here is the, uh, uh, it's the same one. F is the horizontal loading. H is the horizontal loading. Maybe it's the H is better. It looks like uh, the, the deflections of depending on different uh, head condition, we have uh, this kind of close of solutions for this kind of situations. Maybe you know, in case of infinitely long pile, infinite long pile means that uh, in mathematically, uh, it's a long pile means, uh, uh, it's there a just kind of flexibility over there. Uh, Dr. Tadishi know the Chang, Chang's method. C H A N Chang. Chang proposed this kind of solution for the infinite long pile. We call the uh, Chang's method. Maybe you, in text where you saw this kind of one for the uh, cases over here. Uh, it's a bearing. Like, uh, the co instead of just a constant of K, it's like a bearing cases like here. In this case, a different one compared to the constant EI and different one we obtain plus from solutions over here. Maybe it's reference for your just uh, information and I'm showing uh, summarized the uh, result uh, and you can uh, use in practically maybe this one in the preliminary design stage, I mean. The rest of my just lecture uh, I am focusing on the what's the coefficient of a subgraded reaction. Why? And this is spring constant is a is a represent the subgraded reaction of the soil. So there are many many just available method to estimate the this kind of some modulus. The Father of the geotechnical engineering, the Carl Terazaki, just uh, originally proposed uh, horizontal sub reaction more like that. Uh -huh. uh, also, some KH is, uh, uh, in case of sand, uh, as I told you, linear bearing with depth is uh, KH is uh, like that. 
maybe I'll, I'm already talking about this one. Uh, for example, this is the pressure, maybe due to applying loading, and then there is uh, some deformations, and we have uh, this kind of uh, some uh, relations, and this slope. This looks like uh, what's that? Uh, Submerged modulus in the soil. I mean, it's an empirical just relations by Brom. Uh, this, uh, in case of a beam elements, uh, using some reaction approach. I realized the soil as a series of horizontal layers. He proposed, based on linear elastic analysis, KH value over here. Subredge modulus, I told you, the coefficient. The subredge modulus is the coefficient of subredge modulus. Why? It's very, it's, it's changing, depending on the location, depth, size of the footing, right? If size is very large, mega size, in the case, do you expect a large settlement compared to the limited area? So if the settlement is larger and larger and larger and the submerged modulus is then this larger, this one decreases, right? It's not a constant, okay? So maybe in the foundations, maybe, in the bed foundations, maybe, maybe in, in Korea we have a 60 meter and 60, about, I'm sorry, 70 uh, meter and 70 meter square. There is uh, the Lotte Super Tower, about 125 story building. So when I just have a face mapping of that, just uh, bearing rocks, we nearly want to identify those submerged modulus at different locations. So there are so many geological data and some geotechnical information and then we can replace that system into submerged reaction modulus to solve some kind of some better foundation analysis, right? So depending on location, corner, center is different. Also, uh, if the footing is uh, excavated up to at certain depths, maybe shallow depths, deep depths, has a different subway reaction modules, right? Also, depending on different soil, we have a different modulus. So we need to consider all kind of a situation and represent one simple some kind of a modulus, like a subway reaction modulus. So that's why as a geotechnical tech engineer, it's a little okay, but uh, especially the structural guy, they don't know exactly about the meaning of the subreaction modulus. So they ask the geotechnical engineer, what's the subreaction modulus of the foundation or some footings and some kind of systems. So maybe many just uh, cases uh, I'm showing, maybe you can just uh, look through and then uh, you have uh, some proposed by Davison and Dees. Uh, depending on different types, uh, you have uh, some kind of different uh, constant value and the coefficient value over here. Uh, also, using standard penetration test, uh, you have uh, some kind of uh, some approximately this kind of uh, some values through some kind of uh, some previous research. So I'm just showing, and you can look through carefully and when you design. This kind of some reaction part, maybe. You can use each one of them. And uh, uh, for the Brom's, the Scampton, uh, Davison, they proposed empirically. Or you can use the same as vertical, but like here. It's vertical, it's horizontal, but looks almost the same. That's why I'm just include the vertical cases over here. And uh, uh, some kind of uh, equations. Is the some kind of some uh, simple equations over here, and then calculate uh, of this value, and then and depending on different size, you can calculate these ones using the simple equations over there. Uh, approximately uh, Bowers, the scholars proposed this one uh, well, uh, was 40. Safety factor multiplied QA for the empirically. 
Uh, this is the based on the ultimate bearing capacity error this displacement of one inch. I mean, some other guys are proposing the, the, the values over there and they calculate the KS. KS is vertically, horizontal is the KH, all well, the same meaning. So maybe in case of beam, uh, this part about approach, this part is all approaching some one in the real situation. So maybe we can replace the one and get um, this kind of ones for the KH value over here, elastically. Okay, just uh, I'm pretty please summarize uh, the, the horizontal load of the pi, especially in the uh, reaction, just the uh, modulus part. And uh, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, just uh, I don't mention about them in case of just group piles, the same as vertical, we have some horizontal load pile, have some kind of some group piles, but still uh, there is some, it's not, in some cases it's not clear in case of the horizontal load group piles. But still, in my lecture, I just, uh, initially I just uh, input one and then before I came here, I just uh, all just uh, take out of this, the text and maybe just uh, it's not the firm conclusion in just group piles, horizontal loaded piles. And that's why just uh, I'm just stop here and uh, I would like to get uh, some questions and then we have another speaker uh, proposed by here. Maybe he, he just, yeah, yes. I'm just, uh, the best way I can do is based on the just the loading test, plate loading test is the best way because in this case, it's a very important site. Compulsorily, we are doing some just plate loading test or by loading test, right? So I mean, uh, that's empirical one is just empirical. Just I'm showing, but I don't care about the empirical one. Only in the preliminary stage, I'm just uh, thinking because we don't have enough information, and then we can assume the soil properties and some kind of some miscellaneous just uh, parameters, uh, and then we can just uh, get some idea. And then in the real just uh, construction or just design stage, I need uh, some kind of some kind of some plate rotting test. Uh, maybe in case of pile, in case of uh, some uh, shallow foundation. Maybe we have uh, some uh, derivations of the K, just the uh, reaction modulus, uh, but I did not include over here, but the best way is to base on the testings. Yeah. In the very high-rise buildings, it's a compulsory. Depending on different joining, you have uh, some different uh, some rock bases, we can joining right there, because too large is just space, and then, Depending on John, we must have some different KH values. It's highly depend on some kind of some, some conditions of soil and based on the values, we have different settlement, differential settlement or total settlement we can get. So it's very important factor. Yeah. So based on my lecture, maybe load, maybe you can check another some kind of one thing and you can compare and based on your situation you can choose by just own just suitable factors so tomorrow afternoon maybe i can show you some kind of some plan view of some foundation depending on location you can calculate some kind of some subway reaction modulus and the input of that part in the commercial just uh, in our code, and then you can calculate some deflections and some variations of some settlement value depending on the location. Yes. So in the GDP of soil, in the vicinity of pile mm. In case of, uh, you can imagine the soft ground, uh, maybe around the uh, Bombay, just a uh, seesaw, just beach area, probably, you can just install some kind of uh, some, some, some offshore or uh, some 
uh, filings over there, maybe. Uh, I can imagine, in the case, uh, it's a non-linear. Non-linear POI curve is better than the linear one. But uh, in case of very strong, just uh, very, just uh, good condition of uh, just rock basis or uh, this kind of thing, it uh, must be a linear, okay? It's a very common just sense, I think. Uh, also, in case of dynamic loadings, very fast and uh, uh, short amplitude of dynamic loading, that must be a linear case. So, depending on situations, it's a bad condition of the soil, that must be a non-linear, okay? In the case, if you use linear, it's not good. common sense. Any model soil file separation using model? What do you mean? Soil pile separation. Soil pile separation thing must be done by the mechanical analysis like a continuum analysis. But here it's a physical model because in geotechnical field, maybe the most important thing is the represent the soil behavior. That's why we are saying spring model. But in most case of some structural division, they don't use this kind of some old model. Because this uh, something like uh, pushing over model like, uh, but uh, in uh, continuous analysis like uh, finite element method or the other some method, maybe they can handle this kind of uh, some separation of the just the pile separation of the soil through this interface element. Uh, maybe it depends on the one, but uh, there is also a uh, disadvantage using some kind of finite element method, right? We don't represent the exactly same as the soil model, like uh, um, in the library of that, um, uh, like Abacus and any other programs, they have their own just soil model, but they don't count on this kind of uh, just uh, things exactly. Okay? That's why. Hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, you, you are just talking about imagine some kind of retaining walls in the very limited area yeah. and there is uh, some piling uh, yeah, that, what? No, uh, I don't want, uh, instead of a retaining wall, a cone type of arrangement. Cone type? Yes, uh, not contiguous piles, but piles spaced apart. Oh, yeah, 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 group piles, yeah. yeah, yeah. Piles spaced apart. <laughs> so, Subject into lateral loading. Uh -huh. For the retaining one? Instead of retaining one. For what? The retaining of the, the For back. Retaining the, uh, sorry, right. the function of the retaining wall is uh, just register. Yeah. Register the, the back os pressures. Okay. Uh, okay. But maybe, as I told you, but uh, it's not efficient, but the, the passive pile, I told you, Over here, uh, this is the one of the option you can think about the stabilizing piles. That means that stabilizing means what's that? Uh, to resist the, 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 the sliding mass by this just uh, a series of some, some piles in the laterally, you can reduce in most case in the sloping ground, like using this one. This is one of the options. In the sloping area, in most cases, it's a limited area. Maybe you can put the piling at a certain depth, and then you can just reduce or just a certain amount of lateral just earth pressures using. Because the pile is installed right like here, the soil is like that. It's not this direction. It's like... A, it's a wedge direction, it's just resist, the pile resist only at this certain just 
directions and then this function, the filing can do that. But the first one thing is to good is the retaining one, make uh, some kind of uh, some plain just the uh, words. Maybe it's better, but maybe you can use uh, like that kind of systems instead. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I am just talking like that. It's a uh, it's filing. Uh, it's a uh, retaining means uh, this just a uh, later just the soil is like that, this direction like that. So most of the just the known factor is 2.5D. This is the worst thing. The file diameter. So the resisting part is uh, approximately 2.5D, usually using in field. So compare your cases like here, maybe you can replace this kind of words using these systems. Okay? Based on, if it's good condition, it's perfect. 2.5 is, is okay in most case. Oh, good. it's not easy, this one, because depending on the soil conditions, maybe, we call this a wedge theory, uh, or, or horizontal loaded pie. Uh, in most cases, it's uh, 45 degree plus uh, 2 point but over internal friction angle divided by 2. It's, uh, it's uh, first just uh, assumption, maybe, this way. But depending on some soil, we have a different angles. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh-huh. But uh, in the real field, we can do this one by connecting the beam eh? horizontally. Yes, yes. This is a typical one. In the sloping ground, we are placing the pile at certain space, and then the head of the piling we can connect it all together by using beam. That's the typical just the construction method available in the, in the, in the sloping ground. Okay. Yes. But uh, expensive. It's, it's perfect. Expensive. Diaphragm is very expensive. This one is very cheaper. And uh, uh, maybe probably if you use the wood dragging, retaining wall, maybe it's the, the cheaper. And then the piling is second. And this kind of some uh, diaphragm is very expensive. Okay? Depending on the just the, uh, just the, uh, some some excavation depths. No height is around thirty meters. I mean, just uh, in case of thirty meters, is uh, is uh, we can expect uh, large horizontal deflections. Okay. In most cases, of deflect just the excavation up above the 10 meter, we must retain systems. Okay, in the below 10 meter, in the in the in the bomb area, is no problem exactly. But in the engineering sense, uh, above the larger the the deeper, like just 30 meter, we must have some retaining systems. So, due to the very limited area, maybe you can use some kind of uh, some uh, all sank systems, maybe, instead of the diaphragm wall, to, to tight, tight road, something like this kind of some back just uh, systems or filing systems is the, is the one of the options you can think about for the retaining systems. Thank you. So, good morning, all. Uh, thank you, Professor Ashish, for giving me an opportunity uh, to share with you all so, some of my recent experiences. 
uh, specifically on load testing of uh, foundations, uh, mostly in uh, Mumbai city. So, just before uh, uh, moving uh, into uh, the testing portion, I just show you some of the failures, one should understand uh, the kind of failures we encounter and uh, so how we can uh, mitigate these kind of events. Now, this is Malin landslide. So, in 2014, one entire village so was wiped off because of a landslide. So, this uh, place is very close to uh, Pune city and you can see this is uh, some of the uh, uh, failures, we consider failures so, of Vadala Severi link road. So, wherever there is a pillar here, so you can clearly see. So, there is a heaving of uh, ground here and uh, of course, Mumbai Pune Express Highway. So, this is a recurrent event and uh, every time so you can see this kind of uh, failures during the uh, rainy season. And then so landslides especially in Satara Mahabaleshwar road, so a frequent landslides and uh, and you can see so some of the uh, uh, failures of the retaining structures. So uh, in Mandi, Himachal Pradesh and you can see, okay and uh, in 2000 again this year so in June, so there is a big landslide or uh, slow failure uh, and there was a danger to one of the high rise structures in Mumbai and you can see here. So, this is the kind of failure, failure of the supporting system, okay. And you can see here, so this is again, so one of the metro stations uh, in Singapore. So, again you can see here, so not only the load testing, but even the setup should be properly designed, otherwise what happens here is a failure of a candle system in this particular case and failure of a retaining structure, so in Hyderabad. And then so deep excavations you can see in uh, uh, places in Andheri in Mumbai and uh, sometimes you may be required to design the piling system to support the structures. Uh, so, and the uh, depth of the excavation may be more than 30 meter in this particular case. Now, so this is uh, again so very recent uh, uh, case, this is a Mumbai Metro Line 3. And you can see here, so all these are basically is, uh, the excavation supporting system using the piles what so uh, the previous speaker was uh, talking about. And if you see, uh, uh, this is uh, nicely presented by uh, Professor Clayton from Southampton University, he says uh, the causes of the construction delays. So major causes you can clearly see here, so the uh, wrong uh, boundaries, uh, soil boundaries or soil properties. So, these are the major causes of the delays in the construction project. Now, if you see here, so uh, the geotechnical engineer, engineering, so basically the Kudoto 1994, he, he gave a nice example on what is exactly geotechnical engineering. So, he says the art and science of molding materials we do not fully understand into shapes we cannot precisely analyze to resist forces we cannot accurately predict. The uh, main speaker will present uh, something today on uh, LRFD designs where uncertainties uh, will be properly handled in the design of foundation system. I will just show you some of the case studies uh, from Mumbai. So, again, so these are the common concerns when uh, we design any foundation system, whether it is shallow or deep foundation system. The common concerns are like this. So, is the proposed field investigation adequate to characterize the materials at a site? So, in this case, if, uh, if you are asked, to uh, investigate a ground. So, the very first question comes how many number of boreholes I need to take, what kind of testing I need to carry out and then once the testing is done, then you need to identify the appropriate values of strength and stiffness. So, what is the modulus or what is the, uh, uh, maybe you can see uh, the cohesion or friction angle of the soil and then, so once you have all the input parameters. Now, let us consider that you are asked to find out the bearing capacity or settlement of a structure corresponding to any load now comes the kind of analysis. What kind of analysis? If you open the books, there are n number of methods to obtain the bearing capacity and similarly settlement. So, then one should be very, very careful in choosing the right analysis leading to the bearing capacity or settlement here. So, once everything is done, so tomorrow if somebody asks a question, how confident are we as engineers that the proposed design is safe and adequate? And again, the LRFD design are risk based design, so attempts to uh, identify this risk in the analysis. Now, you can see here, this is the kind of profiles, geological profile you may encounter. So, this is one of the profiles from Changi International Airport, Singapore. You can see here, so how variable is the profile? If you can, if you take two boreholes or three boreholes or four boreholes, most of the information may be completely missing. So, that is the reason investigation is not a simple task. 
and however uh, uh, precision we involve, so there is always a certain amount of risk involved in this, okay. So now, so uh, this is of course when we design the foundation system, so a lot of questions come into picture and so what I present now is uh, some case studies from uh, Mumbai, so very recent case studies. Uh, so again, so in this particular case basically what happened, so the uh, designer wanted to uh, design uh, the foundation system based on SPTN values. SPT test was carried out, but unfortunately what happened, there were many discrepancies in the uh, SPT profiles in the site. So ultimately what it is decided that uh, to uh, identify or to find out what is the appropriate bearing capacity, plate load test was suge suggested, so to verify safe bearing capacity. Now once somebody says, okay, go for plate load test, again question comes how many number of tests I need to carry out, okay. So then, so once the number of tests are uh, decided, now what is the size of the plate, okay. So if you open the code, every code uh, gives a range of values. So for the plates, now in this case, these are the kind of concerns one has. So in this particular case, the uh, safe bearing pressure uh, required is 45 ton per square meter and the size of the plate is decided as 0 0.75 meter a square plate and number of tests are decided 4 and the depth of proposed depth of foundation is 3.4. So basically the plate load test was conducted at 3.4 meter below the ground surface. Of course, these are the uh, other details. Now you can see here these are the uh, photographs of the plate load test using the conventional cantilever system, okay. Now you can see, so all this information, okay. So this is, these are the photographs. Now uh, of course, the concerns again, so is something like this. Now, uh, if I show you the load test information, now under uh, forget about who is handling, but uh, as an engineer, we should be very, very uh, particular. So now, in this particular case, what uh, it is done is it is noted that settlement of the plate. Now, you can see here. So these are the kind of data which you can get from the load test. So what it is noted that under so this is uh, load settlement curve, so now 45 ton per square meter is the safe bearing pressure. Now under 45 ton per meter square, so the settlements are around uh, 7 millimeter. Now so whether this 7 millimeter is considered safe or not, so that is the kind of question. Now what exactly happens here, the size of the plate used in this case is 75 centimeter, but the real footing sizes uh, for this uh, site. So they are, you can see here, the foundation size is 12 meter. Now if I apply the question here is if I apply 45 ton per square meter and the, on two plates, one is 75 centimeter and other one is 12 meter size, now can I assume the same kind of settlements for 12 millimeter also. Now if you see, so uh, our code of practice, Indian standard code of practice gives an equation to extrapolate the settlement of uh, the footing of uh, knowing the settlement of the plate and the plate size and foundation size. As per this, if you see the maximum, what you can see here, irrespective of whatever the size, whatever the ratio of the size of the footing and the size of the plate, maximum what you can is 2. The ratio of uh, settlement of the uh, uh, real footing uh, and uh, the settlement of the plate is maximum 2. Basically, so means that now if this is subjected to settlement of something like 7 millimeter, so what it was uh, estimated that the settlement of the real footing need not, may not be more than 13 millimeter in this particular case, okay. Now if I show you the studies which were carried out, of course, if you see this particular figure, as I mentioned here, so now so this is the kind of uh, equation which you can find in the course of practice. Now if you use this equation, now you can clearly see here, this is this, this, these dots represent the equation number 1. So here the irrespective of the size of the footing, so the, the ratio is varied up to uh, 20, okay, ratio of size of uh, footing and plate is varied to up to 20, but still what we can find from this equation is maximum ratio of uh, settlements of footing and plate is not more than 2. But in reality, if you see the figure here above. So long back in 1970 itself, it was clearly uh, understood that the 
ratio of settlement of footing and settlement of the plate may go beyond 10. Okay, may go beyond 10 in this particular case. Now, so what, what we use is basically is uh, this equation, so equation 2 is other equations where maximum ratio is around 4, but in reality, so these dots, individual dots tell you that the settlements of the real footing may go above 10 times the settlement of the plates under the same pressure. So, one should be very, very careful. There is no solution to this, but one should understand that is the reason given the uh, choice, we always consider using plates of larger size, okay. So, that is the reason. So, if you uh, see the code, code clearly specifies that if you are uh, using plate load test to find out the bearing capacity or settlement of footing under any load, at least three different sizes of plates should be tested and the result should be extrapolated cautiously, okay. So, this is uh, one condition. Now, you can see here uh, from this the observations are geotechnical investigation of course, in this particular case are inconclusive that is the reason the plate load tests are conducted. Now, uh, of course, when you conduct uh, plate load tests, scaling effects is one of the issues and extrapolation of footing settlements, again there is uncertainty. Now, I will just show you another uh, uh, study uh, on pile foundations, of course, these are the kind of details you can clearly see when we are uh, designing piles, piles are tested at two stages. One is initial pile load test before the designs are finalized. The second one is routine pile load test once piles are uh, driven are constructed into the ground. Before the act, before the superstructure is constructed, piles once, once are once again uh, load tested. So, they are called routine piles and they are part of foundation system. That is the reason the maximum load uh, should not be more than 1.5 times the working load and if the settlements are very excessive, then you need to stop the testing. Now, this is the kind of reaction system by Cantlage. So, what you can see here, so means you can clearly see here, so there are setups which can go up to here in this particular case is something like 7500 ton load it can apply on the piles, okay. Now, so duration of the piles, uh, this, this information you can find from the uh, course. Now, so in this particular case again another 4 and 6 study and a failed case. So, one thing so you please understand, uh, Professor G. A. Leonards who is the professor at uh, Purdue University very famous uh, professor, uh, what he says that especially for geotechnical engineers, we learn more from failure than successes. So, once you see that there is a failure, so there are many opportunities for you, for us to learn from this and again this is something on a pilot test, uh, a 3 plus 10 story building, 13 story building, so which was coming up in uh, Pravadevi in Mumbai. The total number of piles at the site is 230, piles is uh, 600 millimeter board piles and average depth of bedrock. Basically, these piles are rock socketed piles, nothing but piles go below the bedrock. Now, so these are the bedrock, uh, this is the bedrock level and uh, this particular site is very close to the Dadar Chaupati seashore, so around 150 meter from the seashore. So, there is lot of ingress of salt water and that is the reason to, uh, to protect the piles, concrete and steel from the excessive salts. So, the permanent liner was uh, used till the bedrock, nothing but this is something like yesterday. So, uh, the main speaker was telling about uh, the negative skin friction. Basically, when you use a liner, nothing but the skin friction from the ground surface till the bedrock is completely compromised, okay. So, permanent steel liners are used here, and in this particular case, rock socket depth is 6D, nothing but below the bedrock, 6 into 0.6 is basically 3.6 meter. So, the pile. Uh, depth below the bedrock and the design capacity of each pile is 200 ton and so as I mentioned, so initial pile, so initial pile was conducted uh, uh, at the site with a maximum capacity of 500 ton. So, contractor was told to conduct the pile load test till 500 ton load is achieved. Now, so this is the investigation was carried out up to 22 meter here in this case, okay. So, these are the kind of termination. So, the issue here is you can see this is the liner was a, what I was telling. So, load test was conducted. So, the, the contractor was asked to conduct the pilot test till 500 ton load, but uh, once uh, he reaches 300 ton load, so he was not able to apply any further load. So, what exactly happened is the anchors, rock anchors lifted up. So, there was not sufficient anchor force here. So, now, so the settlement of the pile is 
around 12 millimeter and there is a tilting of pile from the start of the test was noted and not able to apply beyond 300 ton load. So again, so anchor failure was one of the issues. Now, so the same load test was uh, repeated once again and then so this time so more precautions were taken. So, in, so this time what uh, the contractor did instead of four, two anchors earlier, so now four anchors were used and uh, instead of, of course, so two hydraulic jacks, uh, one hydraulic jack, two hydraulic jacks are used in this particular case. This is a load test data, but then so you can see here, so conducted in September 2017, so very recent one. And of course, now uh, once the, uh, if you see the repeated pile load test, at this time what uh, it was done is rock socket was increased to 8.5 D. Okay. So now if you see the course, course clearly say the rock socket, maximum rock socket of maybe 4 times D, but again, so it all depends on your site conditions. So here is 8.5 D is the uh, rock socketed depth. With this, the pile load test was conducted, but now the settlement of the pile is hardly 6 millimeter. And in the case of piles, 12 millimeter is considered as the maximum settlement. Now 6 millimeter is the uh, pile settlement. Again, so client asks whether we can reduce the rock socketed depth because there are 230 piles are there. Each meter really counts. But then, so if you want to do, if you want to bring any changes again, load test required to be conducted. But ultimately, so 8.5D rock socket depth, all the piles are tested. Now, all the construction is over, now the superstructure is coming up here. So now, if you see way forward, proper ground investigation is a must and continuous field monitoring is very, very necessary. So, use appropriate soil rock data, lessons, of course, we need to learn lessons from failures. Failures are inevitable and again, so if you uh, do not think of uh, the possible failures, there will be delays and uh, so load test may fail any time. So initial piles may fail or routine piles may fail to perform better. Now if they fail, so we should have a quick option readily available. Otherwise what happens, there will be a lot of discussion on that and so work will go at a very, very slow pace. Okay. So thank you very much. So if you have any questions, but of course there are many, many questions. So because uh, we are handling this project, especially this project is more than one and a half year. Okay. So, so definitely, so each uh, uh, each project is a learning experience. So there are many, many option opportunities and options available to learn. So that is what we are doing at IIT Bombay. Yeah. Any questions? One or two questions I can take. Yeah. So this is uh, uh, I did not I did not uh, show you the dynamic load test uh, uh, test here data, but uh, in this side, uh, especially for routine piles. So, routine piles, after all the piles are constructed, you need to randomly select few piles and load test. Once all piles are selected, constructing the cantilage and uh, testing the piles in the conventional manner is very, very difficult. That is the reason even in this particular site, dynamic load tests are conducted. No, there are there are correlations available between the uh, conventional load settlement curve and our conventional load capacity obtained from the cantilage methods and the dynamic load uh, testing methods. So there are correlations available, but one should be very very careful. Okay then, thank you.